To make great financial decisions today, you need to know what the tax picture looks like in 2026. That's right, you need to know the 2026 tax rates. I'll explain why and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, when you're working every single year, yes, every single year, don't put it on autopilot. You've got to decide whether it's best for you to contribute pre-tax or Roth for retirement. It depends on what's your tax picture today, and also what do you think your tax picture will be out there in the future? That's when you're working. When you're retired, you've got to do the same thing. You've got to think, well, when I am, you know, drawing dollars out, or even if I'm, even if you're not drawing dollars out, you need to consider, well, what will, what's my current tax picture today? And what could it be in the future? How might it change out there in the future when I, you know, start tar- taking my required minimum distributions, if I receive an inheritance from, from the folks, or if I, you know, d- have delayed Social Security when I start Social Security, that sort of thing. You've got to be aware of both of those. So this proactive approach, yes, you don't know the future, you don't know what they're gonna do with tax rates, but you can have some foresight. And that foresight, what we call planning, informs better decision-making today. Because again, yes, the future is always unknown, absolutely, but you can do some proactive planning work and that informs what decisions you should make today. So what do we know about tax planning today that can shape the future? Well, back in 2017, Congress made some sweeping tax law changes, really big tax law changes. Um, and what it did is it, it doubled the child tax credit, it got rid of exemptions, but then it, it doubled, uh, essentially doubled the standard deduction. It made some changes to itemized deductions as well. And yes, it lowered actual tax rates, okay? All in all, this amounted to, and I remember this even though it was, you know, six years ago or so, but that the, uh, the, the government was projecting that this was going to save people, all of these, these tax law changes, were going to save the average person about $1,200 and federal, federal taxes. And yes, to each their own, everyone's got a unique situation, but yeah, we do, you know, three, 4,000 tax returns a year. So we see a pretty big sample size. And yeah, for the most part, that was true. A single individual probably saved about a thousand bucks, maybe 1200, maybe 1500 and married filing jointly, probably double that just, just about. Okay. Not to a person, but on average, that's pretty much what we saw. Well, when they put those tax law changes in place, as Congress often does, they say, well, this makes sense for now and we'll pass it for now. But listen, at some future date, everything's gonna go back to to the way it was. So if this doesn't pan out well, there's an automatic reset button that Congress at the this future date will need to determine, yeah, let's keep this around or no, let's let it automatically go back to the way it was. So that's what happened in, uh, it, when they rolled out these tax law changes in 2017. And therefore, they pushed that date out there to the end of 2025, beginning of 2026, where all of these current tax law changes are set to sunset and expire and go back to the old 2017 tax rules and tax rates. Therefore, this is why as we're doing financial planning, tax planning, and helping our clients deliver their tax return for 2022 and prepare for 2023, we're also showing them what the tax return, or excuse me, what the tax brackets and tax rates will look like in 2026 if Congress doesn't act. Now, are we, do we have a high degree of confidence that Congress will not act and, and the tax laws will sunset? No, just, just like you know everyone else. I do know the current financial condition of our budget and our, our country, the, the national debt. I also know it is not a popular uh, opinion. You're not gonna get a lot of votes if you say I'm going to raise taxes on everyone. Um, and therefore, this out of, well, Congress, and, and oh, the other thing we know, is Congress and politics are extremely polarized right now. Therefore, to come together and cross party lines to actually get something done is going to be uniquely challenging. And therefore, it seems possible and maybe more probable that they will just point fingers across the aisle 
and let the tax rates sunset and go back to where they were in 2017. So we will know more over these next couple of years, but it behooves you to be proactive and plan ahead to say, well, what might tax rates look like and should that influence any of the decisions that I'm making right now? All right, so here are the 2023 tax rates and tax brackets. Yes, you need to know both of them. For single filers, the first 11 grand that you make after all of your deductions is taxed at 10 at 10 percent from 11 to 45, almost call it 12, 12 percent from 45 to 95, 22 percent, 95 to 182, 24 percent, and so on. Married and filing jointly, basically double those numbers. Okay, so 10, 12. 22, 24, and so on, and pretty wide tax brackets. Those have, have, uh, have widened, actually, going into 2023 because of all the inflation. So that's 2023 tax brackets. Now let's look back at what they were in 2017, as that will be what the tax rates and tax brackets revert to currently if everything sunsets starting in 2026. Structure, the, it, the layout is a little bit different here, but it goes from 10% to 15% to 25%, 28, 33, 35. So yes, higher tax rates, and yet also smaller tax brackets. The first 9,000 is taxed at 10%, from nine to 38 is taxed at 15, 38 to 92 is taxed at 25%. 25%, guys, that right now, that, yeah, that's just a, a very big difference. Um, these are for single, for so 92 to 191 is taxed at at uh, at 28%. Um, married filing jointly, 10% is on the first 18,000, 15% from 18,000 to basically 76, 25% from 76 to 153. So you can see, Tax rates, yes, higher, other than that first 10% uh, tax bracket, but those brackets are a little bit tighter. Therefore, this is why this matters. Not only would tax rates go up, but because brackets, if they don't make any changes, would shrink back down a little bit, I don't think this would cause the reverse effect, where if on average, the average person saved $1,200, from these tax cuts back in 2017 into 2018, I don't think when they revert back, if that happens in 2026, it will just mean everyone will pay 1,200 more in taxes. I think it'll be a bit more than that. Maybe even as much as twice as much uh, because tax rates are going up and brackets are shrinking. All right, so what should you do about it? I'm not suggesting go out and make immediate changes, overhaul your entire tax plan and your entire financial plan because this could happen. I'd rather have you be aware that this is on the docket for the next, you know, for, for three years out. Talk to your CFP to see, well, should that influence anything that you're doing? For me, if I'm looking at someone who's on the cusp of retirement, doesn't need to draw, like is, is in the 12% tax bracket, I would consider doing Roth conversions, right? And being reasonable and responsible with them, but I would consider doing Roth conversions saying, yeah, I, I might volunteer to pay taxes at 12%, just in case, because I know that tax bracket and, and tax rate is low right now, and it'll be low in the future too, but if they happen to change it from 12% to 15%, now I've just volunteered to pay some taxes at 12% in, in hopes they don't go to 15. If you're in the 12% tax bracket right now and you're working, I would want you funding uh, Roth, likely, because of, of, these, of the potential changes. Guys, I don't think there's a huge probability that tax rates do revert. I just think it's possible and maybe more possible because of the three criteria that the, the three circumstances that, that could lead to you know this sunsetting actually happening. So work with their certified financial planner. If they're just talking to you about your investments, they're not doing comprehensive financial planning. If they're not helping you with your tax decision making, most CPAs are not doing that either. Their job is to get the right number in the right box, not creatively find ways to help you improve your tax picture and your financial picture. That's the job of your CFP. If you don't have a CFP on your team, contact one on my team. Find us online, corhorn.com. That's corhorn with K, wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.